We all know the shape of a circle. It's one of the shapes which we see in our day-to-day -day life. If I were to ask you to calculate its area, you would probably use the equation of a circle and the tool of calculus to calculate it. However, mathematicians of older days didn't know about calculus, but they did know that the area of circle is pi times the radius square. In this video, we'll explore how they came to this conclusion. We'll see one of the proof by the ancient mathematician Archimedes, who presented a fascinating proof in ancient times that employs double contradiction to establish that the area of circle is pi times the radius square. Let's dive into the fascinating historical proof and gain insight into the brilliance of ancient mathematicians. Circles are complicated shapes, but triangles are relatively easier to understand. Is there a way to convert a circle into a triangle? As it turns out, there is. If you take a right angle triangle with a base equal to the circumference of the circle and a height equal to the radius, then the two shapes will have the same area. But mathematicians don't just take someone's word for it. They want a proof. And the way which Archimedes did this proof is a very indirect way of proving something. Before we get to that, let's calculate the area of a right triangle. We can do this by making an exact copy of the triangle and arranging it in a way that creates a rectangle. The area of rectangle is simply the length multiplied by the width, which is also the number of square blocks on it. Therefore, the area of triangle is half the base times the height. In this case, the base is C and the height is R. To proceed further, we need two preliminary results, also known as lemmas. The first one is to find the area of a regular polygon. For example, let's take a hexagon and draw two diagonals, where the two diagonals meet is the center of the regular polygon. Now let's draw a perpendicular distance h to one of its sides, which is also known as a pathum. We can see two right triangles. We already know that the area of right triangle is half the base times the height. In this case, the base is x by 2 and the height is h. The same goes for the other triangle. Together there it is half times the base, which is x in this case, times the height, which is h. That is usually the area of any triangle, because you can always split any triangle into two right triangles and add the areas of those two triangles to get the area of the whole triangle. If we draw the other diagonal, we can see five more congruent triangles. So the area of all those triangles is the same area times 6. We can bring the 6 with the x and 6x will be equal to the parameter of the regular polygon. Therefore, the area of this figure, or any regular polygon in general, is half the product of the parameter and the height. The second one is the method of exhaustion. This is a technique that can be used to approximate the area of a circle by using regular polygons. We do this by simply increasing the number of sides of the polygons. As the number of sides of the polygon increases, the area of the polygon gets closer to the area of the circle. We can create these polygons by either inscribing them inside the circle, like we are doing now, or circumscribing them around the circle. Now that we have established these two lemmas, let's see how Archimedes proved his theorem. Case 1. Let us assume that the area of the circle is greater than the area of the triangle. Let's inscribe a square, then a pentagon, then a hexagon, and so on until the area of the circle is greater than the area of the polygon, which is greater than the area of the triangle. Can we do that? Yes, we can. By the method of exhaustion, we can come closer and closer to the area of the circle. So that statement is valid. But for our sake, let's just stick with the hexagon for now. If we compare the bottom or height to the radius, we can clearly see that the radius is greater than the height. This is because the radius is the hypotenuse of the right triangle formed by the bottom and the side of the hexagon. So h is smaller than r. Now if we compare the parameter of the polygon to the circumference of the circle, then the parameter of the polygon will be smaller than the circumference since the polygon is inscribed in the circle. So p is smaller than c. From this, we can deduce that the area of the polygon is smaller than the triangle, since h is smaller than r and p is smaller than c. But that's a contradiction. We assume that the area of the polygon is greater than the area of the triangle 
but we then got the result that the area of the triangle is greater than the area of the polygon. This is impossible. So it cannot be true that the area of the circle is greater than the area of the triangle. Now, case 2. Let us assume that the circle is smaller than the triangle. Circumscribe a square, then a pentagon, then a hexagon, and so on around the circle, until the area of the circle is smaller than the area of the polygon, which is smaller than the area of the triangle. In this case, the radius and the height will be equal since we are circumscribing it. But if we compare the perimeter of the polygon to the circumference of the circle, then P is greater than C because we are circumscribing it. From that, we deduce that the area of the polygon is greater than the area of the triangle, another logical contradiction. Therefore, the circle cannot have a smaller area than the triangle. Now, what's left? We know that the area of the circle is not greater than the area of the triangle and it is not smaller either. So the only thing left is that it is equal to it. And that's the proof by the brilliant mathematician Archimedes. We can further solve this problem by putting c equal to 2 pi r. This will give us the area of the circle which is pi r square. <laughs>